The Parenting Junkie. Hi everyone and welcome back to The Parenting Junkie, the place to go to love parenting and for parenting from love. And today I'm really excited to introduce you to you um, one of the methods or philosophies that have so influenced my parenting and that is RIE. So RIE um, it stands for Resources for Infant Educaring and it was coined by Magda Gerber. It is based on her teachings, which are inspired by her work with her paediatrician, Emmy Pickler. Um, and Magda Gerber was born in Hungary, and she brought her teachings to the US in 1980 uh, and founded the Rye Institute in LA. Um, and she died in 2007, um, but Rye is growing at a rapid speed. And today the Rye movement is spearheaded by um, Lisa Sunbury Gerber and Janet Lansbury, both of whom blog successfully and help countless parents, myself included, uh, to revolutionize their approach to parenting, uh, and particularly to infancy and early childhood. So my own love affair with Rye began with my falling down what is known as the Janet for Vortex. Um, Janet's blog was kind of like a gateway drug for me into the world of respectful parenting. So here are some of the things that work in my family um, that we have learned from Rye. So I think number one is a respectful, straightforward communication, even to the youngest of infants. Um, we, you know, things like we never pick up our baby um, before telling him first. Um, Janet says to imagine that you are very old and no longer have control over your body and can no longer communicate clearly um, and just to sit with that image for a minute and think how you would want your caregivers to treat you. Um, and she inspired me to think long and hard about babies and about a baby's perspective, about how it feels to be babied or patronized um, in the negative sense of the word. Um, kind of overlooked or, or treated sometimes like an object or even an accessory. Uh, instead, we've learned to communicate clearly and to look and listen for any forms of communication from even the tiniest of babies. And they're telling us so much if only we stop to listen. The second wonderful thing that we have received from Rai is the emphasis on natural motor development. Um, Rai has taught me to really let my children be as free as possible and trust in their own bodies and in their own timing. Um, not to force a baby into a walking position before he's ready or into a sitting position, not to prop him up, not to accessorize him. Um, to create an interior design that is um, conducive to freedom. Uh, this is called, for example, a yes space, where the child is 100% safe uh, using gates or, or um, just really baby proofing really properly, um, where a child can do you know whatever he wants and is free and doesn't have to keep uh, hearing no, don't touch that, don't do this, don't do that. Um, this is also you know the flip side of this is also how amazing it is for the parents to have uh, the the freedom of the child being safe in their uh, space and the ability to go to the bathroom or to have a cup of tea um, without being stressed out and without stressing our children out. Um, so it's also things like using low chairs and tables and uh, constricting the child's movement as little as possible. Um, you know, and natural motor development also means really using a lot of trust. So avoid, you know, saying be careful all the time. Um, or to avoid doing things for our children that we think that they could probably do for themselves or that they'd like to try on their own. Um, we also don't put much stock in the graphs and charts. As long as they're basically healthy, um, we don't fuss about when they start sitting, when they start walking, or sticking out their tongue. Whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. We trust in their natural uh, development. And of course, we keep an eye on any health uh, issues or you know developmental delays that we, we should be aware of. But just generally, there's a lot of trust and a lot of um, calm uh, with, with regards to that kind of thing. Um, and at the, the ripe age of three and a half, I can say that this approach has contributed to creating a very confident little boy who is very sure-fitted and very daring, but not reckless in the slightest. So for us, it's really, really worked. Um, and then the third thing that we've really taken from Rye wholeheartedly is the concept of encouraging and facilitating independent play as much as possible in our children, giving them long stretches of uninterrupted time um, and Rye puts a huge emphasis on the, ba the baby's competence 
um, and their ability, uh, even their ability to entertain themselves and to explore on their own. So Rai advocates for no screens, no flashing lights, no toys that play and do stuff for the child, but instead really creating a soothing and, and stimulating but simple environment where children can manipulate on their own and make the changes and, and explorations that they want, but not be passively entertained. Um, and allowing babies long stretches of time to discover and explore without pushing or presenting or pointing out what we think um, should be interesting. Um, Rai also emphasizes never interrupting play. So you can really find us tiptoeing around whenever our boys are immersed in play. And we have really felt that this has given them a very, very um, engaged focus and the ability to play for long stretches of time uh, with very little, with you know, very simple little items, uh, if at all. So all in all, Rai has been a wonderful teacher uh, for us. Um, and there are some aspects that have made less sense for our family. Um, for example, we actually really enjoy and, and have connected to what is called baby wearing, uh, which is wearing the baby in a carrier. Um, and I agree with the Rai approach that babies are not accessories to be worn, and I don't particularly love the name baby wearing. Um, I also have seen that for my babies, being held in carriers uh, was a wonderful feeling of closeness and it didn't detract from their time spent independently. Um, and some Rai advocates say that the restrictive nature of carriers do, don't afford babies the freedom that they need and, and deserve, but for us it was really about finding a balance, uh, a bit of this and a bit of that. Um, and we, we felt that it was, it was okay for our family, it was the right thing. Second thing is that we have used a pacifier for both of our children. It's not that I particularly like them or advocate for them. It's just that there is research at the moment to suggest that they um, reduce the risk of SIDS. So for us, it made sense. And also, it, was, it actually really did make our children sleep easier to handle. Um, so we have used them and they're not strictly right either. Um, and with regards to eating, uh, we have preferred the baby-led weaning approach which um, is really a whole separate topic and deserves its own uh, video, but Rai advocates for sitting down with children and giving them full attention during caregiving acts like feeding and bathing, um, whereas baby-led weaning kind of places finger food in front of a child and expects them to feed themselves as part of the family meal and not to be actively fed or, um, or necessarily given, given all the attention during that time. And for me, spoon feeding just didn't make sense for a number of different levels, so I preferred baby led weaning in general. Um, but that was another area that we kind of slightly differed from, from the Rye approach. Um, and finally, um, we opted to do a modified form of what is called elimination communication, which is early potty training and you know actually going diaper free from, from the age of zero. So um, it means following your baby's cues for when they need to potty. And um, we took our baby's diapers off from day one and, and allowed them to eliminate hygienically um, in the bathroom. Um, and before he was two, he was out of diapers. So Rai advocates for waiting uh, for the child to lead the potty training process, the potty learning process it's called. Um, and I really respect that this is a very gentle and respectful approach, but to me it kind of misses out on the incredible communication that can be established between caregiver and child about the child's basic needs for hygiene. I also think that waiting for readiness can sometimes lead children to be in diapers way longer than necessary because we're looking for very specific signs of readiness that are kind of predetermined but aren't necessarily true for each child. Um, and seeing as diapers are a huge draw ecologically and financially, uh, not to mention they're really unhygienic and un unpleasant, um, I believe that in Western culture we completely overlook our children's capacity for potting independently around the age of one, which is something that so many other cultures know to be true and act on. So in doing so, I feel that there's a slight disservice to our kids. So that's one other area of right that I, I have kind of strayed from the pack. But all in all, that's how Rai does and doesn't work for me. And to deepen your understanding of Rai, go grab um, some of these books.
Um, I really recommend going over to regardingbaby.org um, and that is uh, Lisa Sunbury's um, blog uh, and then of course falling into the Janet Vortex at um, janetlansbury.com um, and also going to the official Rai uh, website which is here um, at which is at rye.org. Um, and Janet Lansbury has recently come out with two wonderful books on the topic, um, which I really, really um, recommend and have enjoyed thoroughly. There's also a really wonderful active uh, Rye community on Facebook um, if you become a little bit uh, intrigued by Rye, which I hope you do. So um, I hope that you've enjoyed this. If you have and you think it might be useful to anyone else, please share it. Um, and I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel. Um, that would be just wonderful. So uh, see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. The Parenting Junkie.